so I can locate where my endpoints are on the glass so that I can make that same judgment of distance. For instance, that's an inch there, that's a centimeter there, that's three quarters of an inch there. And this is, you know, an inch and an inch and a quarter so that I can see that my proportions that I'm getting, <clears throat> that I have here in the glass are the same as what I'm getting on my paper. All right, so let's, uh, once you give that a shot, as the machines are gonna be cranking there for a few minutes. Oh, look at that, I mean, my <laughs> etching, printmaking. Um, so that's, a, that's a one way you can do it. I'm sure Karen's got another yeah, way too. That's a good idea, I like using it that way. If you go to Betty Edwards' book, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, she actually has you trace your hand, or kind of like trace your hand on the glass, draw, you know, a box around the crosshairs, draw it, you know, the way you did with the drawing the leaf that you did with me, look at your negative space, stuff like that. So it's a real visual sense of it. But I like this as a tool, too. Just to help me find, like, how long maybe the finger is compared to the palm? How much for short sure you use it? So that instead of just necessarily tracing the whole thing and copying it, you could just use it to help you find that. Start getting used to taking 3D to 2D. So maybe um, people will send you home with one of these. You know, right. and I think practice with this. To help train your brain to go from 3D to 2D and see those proportions. So I like that this, you could maybe start with what Betty Edwards does, and I'm sure you can go find her book in the library or wherever. She's got online lessons. You know, do that. It's one thing when you go home, and then just starting to use it less and less all the time mm -hmm. to help yourself find that. But this is what I've been doing with you when you're, you can look at your own hands, so you just draw. Like since you need to be, both of you are still working on your proportions and it's something that you need to focus on right now. And so you could just hold your pencil like this to do the same thing the glass do. Just like we've been sight measuring this way, we can sight measure how long are my fingers compared to my palm? Because we know they're about the same length. But if I curl them, now they're foreshortened. Just like perspective, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so, so today, you know, even though it's gonna be teaching you Anatomy and, and you know position, all these things, you're gonna focus a lot on your proportion and maybe looking at negative space shapes, okay? So that it's giving you what you need. Does that make sense? What do you think Daniel needs to really focus right now? When you, you wanna show him what you've done? Yeah, I, I can, I, I've, I've seen him uh, as he's working on this. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that your proportions are quite good. What you could do is actually adjust to um, another medium. Maybe uh, try one of the Conte mediums. They're a lot more forgiving, not as clean, not as graphic, but it would be a good chance for you to learn to control that kind of medium. Okay. Um, yeah, it kind the other, of, the other yeah, thing too, I'm sorry. It kind of forces you to think about your line weight a little more because it's so responsive. Mm -hmm. So, because that's your next step is developing your line weight. That's one of the things I see. What do you think, Jordan? Yeah. Uh, the other thing too, um, uh, talking about this last night a little bit, things that are coming closer, you want to emphasize them. Remember, emphasis is one of the principles of design. So you would have a darker or heavier kind of line, right? So if something's coming closer to you or doing the action itself, you could have it darker and allowing your things to go softer in the background. It seems to me that you have a little bit of a graphic outline that surrounds the whole hand. That means that the palm that's farthest away from you, that finger that's farthest away from you, has the same kind of line weight and density as the parts of the hand, like the thumb, is coming towards you. Remember also, too, I did that sketch yesterday holding on to the <coughs> pencil sharpener. So as it was clasped between the fingers, that area is emphasized as well. Again, emphasis is another important aspect. And especially with animation, uh, let's say, for instance, you want the sensation that the character is running and the, the weight that's, the leg that's carrying the weight, you'll notice, will be more solid and the leg that's maybe moving or spinning is lighter or the one further away is lighter. So that's another thing, too. And animators, what they do is they build up very lightly and then when they get to that part that needs to be articulated or emphasized, they start to press harder. And that gives a sensation to the viewer as well that that part of the body or that part of the limb is, uh, is both closer and it is doing the action. It's actually the, the part that's the important part of it. 
Okay, and you can see that uh, when as you look at as you look at animations, and especially the ones that are being. You know that program called Lunchbox. You hear that program? I work with uh, with students in in Miami at the Art Institute with this program. That a lot of sketches. Let's say you had one character. One of them was to make a potato sack dunk a basketball. So how do you make a bag of potatoes dunk a basketball? First of all, it has to have a spine, it has to have some kind of kinetic potential, right? And then it can go up on its peaks, which are the two little points, you know, so the potato sack itself is just sort of, it's got these little, these little feet almost, right? Like it could have, but normally because the potato sack is sort of got all these lumps in it and everything, it's going to sit flat on the ground like that. But now it has to go home and peek up, and then it starts to do, 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 and as it walks, these little <laughs> things go in motion, which are the little feet on the bottom, which is just the corners of the potato sack, right? So with that program, Lunchbox, you actually take you do one drawing, one first one, potato sack's there. Next one, it starts to go up. Next one, goes up, 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 get onto its peaks, and then do, do, do. So one drawing, another drawing, another drawing. Those are all scanned in and sequenced together. So that's how you create the sensation of the movement, right? But as that's happening, there are certain parts of the drawing that stay the same, and there are other parts that begin to move. And the moving parts, you want to be able to control your line width so that they stay lighter. Because if my hands are going like that, there is no dark edge around them. And sometimes artists, they just blur like that. So draw the whole thing, take your thumb, smear it, then they take the eraser and clean up all the parts that are not part of the figure itself. And that way they get the sensation of movement, but it's not dirty, it's clean. So when they scan it, or they can clean it in on Photoshop after and do that too. So those are other little things. Could you put the mic on? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. The only thing you might try um, is like using maybe a softer pencil. You've got some softer pencils here, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, charcoal. Yeah, you could use charcoal pencil even. Um, you could hold your pencil instead of always like you're writing. You could hold it overhand so that you know that you can change your line just like you can with content, right? You can go down for a fuzzy line, up onto the line. Right? To be responding to what you see. And sometimes I sharpen my pencil with a knife, make a chisel point too, so that I can get crisp or wide as I turn. It's almost like a calligraphy point. So those are things that to sort of notice where's the tension, where's the shadow, what you want to end. So, right? so that's something you can turn forward and maybe looking. For a little more emphasis at the joint, get a real sense of you know, structure under there. We can really develop time this week. It's good. Great. So let's uh, hope that they're a little quieter now. Let's get. What are you going to share with us next? <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you stuff that cord under you? Oh, in front of you. I was just going to say. Um, First thing, maybe it's just get get going with the doing it, drawing the hand using the template. It'd be interesting to see where that. You want to do that? Takes you, yeah. So that it trains your eye to see the portion. Okay. So I would use the sharpie rather than the dry erase. So we're not using our sketch pen. Oh, oh yes, you are. To start with that. So do you want them to trace their whole yeah, hand, sure. or do you want them just to find portion in negative space? Who do you want them to do? Um, yeah, something like that. Just bring the back two fingers in and uh, trace the whole hand. You try that, all right? Wait, how do you? What's the? Oh, just just something like this. Yeah, maybe just for shortening. Don't just do it flatter. Yeah, so you got two two fingers, two or three fingers that are more foreshortened than others. And actually, these two flatten out again. And something like that. And hold the palm out. Again, the important thing to look at is these arcs that occur. That will always happen. And the idea is to try to create a visual memory so that you can, when when I say to you, when you're doing a storyboard, storyboards are important. 
and um, you're reading a narrative, and the narrative says he's clutching uh, the end of the stick, and then he squeezes it and starts to swing it. Well, then how do you how do the hands change during those three actions, for instance, to clutch, to squeeze, and then to swing involve a sort of a different type of uh, pressure that the hand's taking upon an object. So for instance, and you'll get a story that, that has these things in it, so you need to be able to articulate how the hands are going to function during that process. So like for instance, uh, you know, this thing is a piece of paper, but there's no way I'd have that kind of line weight pull the piece of paper, it's not necessary, it's light. Mind you, that would work better if I was holding that's something like a baseball bat. Okay, so then you have a heavier line weight because you have a heavier hand, especially if it's masculine too, or diverse as a feminine, right? So um, anyway, we'll start with that. Let's just do a trace. That's an interesting idea too that you could, as a quick way to study when you're still learning, guys, you could use a piece of plexiglass like that to study clutching, squeezing, swinging, holding, pointing, and then look for the structures that he's been teaching us about, like what are the arcs? So it's a fast way to study that or to take some quick photos of your hand doing these actions and then study it so that then it's a little bit faster to draw what's happening, right? And we have to think about a story, right? That's one of the, why we're doing part of this is to get you to this portfolio piece where it's anticipating an action and then um, engaging in that action. And you want to think about these kinds of things and show them that you have awareness around that and how would you draw that, right? Um, and so we're going to see what you can do in three hours with these guys. <laughs> I know. You're going to have to do a lot of homework oh, after. Well, this is going to be on your own later. Okay, so I'm going to let you so, get to it. Okay. Actually, so it's sort of holding parallel to your face. It's best. And yeah, because it's a picture plane, right? So rest it on your wrist. See like this, right? You can rest it on your wrist, so you roll it forward. Curl your hand forward, so it's yeah. like that. There you go. Like lean it on the edge of your wrist of your watch. But there you go. Okay. 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 And then, and then close one eye, stay really still, and trace your view. <laughs> Are we tracing the whole thing? Yeah, trace your hand, and then just keep your keep your uh, using one eye. Because if you use a, a binocular, not a monocular vision, you'll end up with uh, this sort of distortion. You know, have fatter figures than you have. That's gonna just this thing. It's gonna be making the nails like this. Okay. Yeah. You didn't use the dry eraser marker. I'll get you some rubbing alcohol so you can clean off your plates. Translate it to your paper. I would say that uh, the best thing to do too, if you notice what I've done is I've articulated the undercuts or the curves. Everywhere I was talking about yesterday, where the phalanges bend, the skin folds in this little way that you get these smiles or frowns. They call them smiles and frowns, happy or or not. Try to get those in there too. Because that's giving you the sense of the volume. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've got kind of a baseball mitt palm, looks like all the time. Looks like my hand is fat. 
Um, and yesterday I pointed out too, mine's quite boxy. That means the width of it to the height of it is pretty much the same. Great awareness though, because one of the things they've been learning about with uh, character design is mm -hmm. how some characters are square and some are round and some are angular mm -hmm. and, and that tends to give it a different character, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, good examples would be the, the, uh, the old man in Up, he's a box. You ever see the movie Up? No, I, I don't. Or do you know who Jafar or Scar are from the Disney movies? Jaf Jaf yes, I do. Okay. Angular, triangular, mm -hmm. long So we get a different feeling. Okay, good. So, so if you then put this underneath, we're not going to trace it. We're going to draw it, but we can trace the rectangle, right? You can see where that tape line is. So you get the exact same proportion. Yeah. Right? And then take it out and you start drawing and you can use your negative space. Look at that. Look how easy that would be. It's a good step in learning how to draw it. Yeah. So we don't want to use it as a crutch, but as a training tool, it's great. Okay? Well, it's open, isn't it? <laughs> yes or no? Oh, was I wrong? That was somebody else. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're doing it. Yeah. So we're just tracing the clear part, right? Trying to find where that is? Yeah, you could just trace that exact shape on your page and then use like the, the tape line, right? Okay. Um, you can see that right through the glass. So this is the proportions here, the inside of your window? The inside yeah. window is what so. you want. Yeah. You can use that negative space. So put your glass underneath your paper. Oh, okay. Because well, you like, can see through it. You can see through it. I think this mark is going to wipe off if the paper rubs against it. Isn't this Sharpie? Oh, I could rub it off on my finger, so. Oh, it's a water. Oh, you can get it on. Just be Sorry. And then just measure it. Well, that'll yeah. Measure the size of the rectangle and draw it instead of trace it. Okay. That's fine, too. <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was a purple shirt.
want to use the contact for this drawing or just uh, do it yeah. on the uh, No, both the contact. Okay. Yeah, because you already draw nice and light. You've got a, a, good, a good grip with the two tools that you do use. So. Step out of the way so you can oh. get around better. <clears throat> or I could come this way. That's no big deal. I just forgot to come on this way. First thing, first thing, just make the marks. I tell you what, guys. First thing, just make make uh, make the marks on the page. Sort of like, hold on a second. Let me show you. And this is sort of hypothetical. If you've got your window here like this, it's sort of a proportion. It's a vertical rectangle. When you got your thing, make marks just like this, just where the fingers are on. Just make little marks, move around. Don't draw in one whole piece yet. Like so we don't finish the finger and then finish the next finger and finish the next finger. So just make little marks, notations around your composition. What you're doing is you're judging distances between the edge of your frame and the actual phalanges themselves. So you're doing it in two directions. You're going for both, it's called Mondrian, Piet Mondrian, Mondrian lines. And Piet Mondrian used horizontals and verticals to simplify nature into horizontals and verticals, into geometry. So in this case, all you're doing is you're just, you're judging distances between the edge of your framework from that direction and that direction all over the place. So you're looking for just the proportions of where to map it out. Then once those things are done, then you can go in and you can put together your, your hand, your piece. The idea is to force you to move around and then also to evaluate your negative spaces in between all your forms. And I, I, I was thinking to myself, I might recommend that all you did on, on this drawing actually was just shade in the space around the hand instead of actually drawing the fingers themselves. Because we sort of did those exercises already. Yeah. What I'm trying to do is get you to think of another approach into looking at getting proportion and uh, form uh, without uh, without using the elliptical aspect that we had worked on yesterday. So, so how about you erase what you got and do this with negative space? Like... Then, you know, some of my next one is here, but what I'm just looking at is how to get... So the first thing I was just doing is mapping out on my in my rectangle where things would go. All right, you understand? So let's let's give you guys a stick of content here and just do it again. So I want you to start again. Right? Yeah. Get another rectangle and use the side of the stick to color in that shape you see around it, and that you're looking for proportion and negative space. Kind of idea. Yeah. New, new page, new rectangle, start again. <laughs> just like you, you play piano, right? You probably had a lot of practice, and there was things you just did, and then you did it again. Practice that arpeggio, I don't know, that chord, whatever it is. I don't play piano, but. <laughs> All right, so let me see here. I'm going to scale up with the help. Portions of the scene. It's really a lot like that drawing the leaf thing that you did in the study guide, Sam. <clears throat> so just have, just have a look here for a second, guys. Now, my window's not exactly the same. I'm just using the outside of it, but it's the same proportions. That means that the height and width, regardless of the fact that it's tape on it, doesn't change. Now, if I look at this, if I look at this window here, this space, not quite halfway down, that's about halfway, we're judging. Okay, so about halfway down is where my palm is going to be. You can just make a notation in there. But my, um, my thumb, it actually touches just below that, if I look at that negative space, so it touches about there. And my wrist is about here, all right? So what I'm looking at is this little piece of negative space. That's where my wrist would be. And I'm gonna come up here, and my thumb is about there. The top of my thumb is in here. 
and I look down, oh wow, right in the center, almost right in the center, just down a little bit there, not too much base is where my pinky is. If you wanted to, you could just go la 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 la, because I can see that I've got a kind of consistent arch down there. You gotta be careful and don't exaggerate it, but we're looking at the shape of that negative space and we're making it hopefully the same as this one. If I look across from my finger here, okay, my thumb should be a little higher. And if that was my thumb, it's right there, my pinky finger will be a little lower and just a bit in, not quite at the edge here. And let's come down to my wrist. You're just going to move around. And, and I can see that I've got this nice negative space kind of coming down in this direction here too. Now it does some undulations in there. Got this piece there and a sort of little bulge in there. And then I can look and see my finger, oh, I'd say about the pocket of my thumb is almost halfway. So maybe about in here. And I got that nice little lifeline in there. And if I come right across, that lines up horizontally, 180 degrees across. And that was that little pocket comes right across. And that tells me where this finger here is going to begin. So I'm just making notations and that's gonna help me figure out then how to fill in the negative spaces around it proportionately. And that's all it is. It's just an exercise in changing the way you're thinking about uh, getting form and, and uh, scale and proportion. Okay, I, don't know, I call it horizontals and verticals because what you're doing is you're evaluating the distances this way and then this way. And so then in the end, you're just you're gonna fill in the space. A little more clean than I'm doing it. And I'm just getting between the, these parts. And you guys, you'll notice this is good for figure drawing too. That's why I'm showing it to you, because the hand is sort of a mini me of the whole figure. Remember I mentioned that last night? Yeah. All right. So. So you found horizontals, verticals. Yeah, horizontals, uh, verticals. You looked also where it touches mm -hmm. the frame. And then also relationships between the uh, perimeter, the outside edge of the rectilinear space. So we could say what this is half, and this is half, and then so of course that would be three quarters, and we could say this is one quarter. You know, it's not meant to be too complicated. It's when you start putting numbers in it, sometimes people get bent out of shape. Just uh. I also looked for the arc of the fingers, and mm -hmm. you looked the pocket of the thumb was something to locate. Yeah. And you were kind of comparing it to the the pinky one, is it? Yeah, if I look right across, it actually culminates horizontally exactly where the, uh, the, mm -hmm. the ring finger comes out. Okay. And, and, and this is how, and I'm showing you this because this is how I look at the figure when I'm drawing last night. When I'm drawing him, the reason why he looked on my paper, he looks realistic, is because I'm I'm looking at I'm not I don't care about necessarily what the model looks like. All I'm doing is I'm making relationships between parts. So I'm scanning across, and when his head is like this, I'm not trying to draw his head like this. I'm making a mark that where the outside of his head meets with his armpit. So then I can scan quickly from the outside of the head to the armpit, and then I can go piece of head, piece of armpit. They line up. Then I start to go armpit into the rib cage and back up to the side of the head. So I'm making relationships between parts. And in the end, when all that happens, it comes together, oh, and it looks like his pose. So that's all it is. And the same thing can go with the hand. This is the smaller form. But you're looking at parts in relation to other other. You're scanning across vertically, and you're not articulating only one piece at a time. That's all. So this is another way to practice doing that. Okay. okay. You have a question or anything? Or? I don't know. No. Does it, does it make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. So like, it's pretty straightforward. So. Yeah. It's like, so, so there's one thing, like, for instance, the way you're sitting right now, I can look at, if you go like that, obviously your shoulders are sloping, okay? So I can make that slope line, but then when I want to when I want to see where your shoulder is at its high point, 
and then how do I get the rest of your body to relate to that high point? I will scan vertically down and I'll see, does your hip line up with your shoulder? And if it does, I go shoulder, hip. Then when I'm at the hip, I scan across this way. How about the other hip? Oh, it's high, it's lower down. All right, so it's lower down. And then what does that line up with vertically? Ah, okay, the other shoulder. So that the axis of the shoulders and the axis of the hips are parallel. So I make judgments by scanning around and making, they call them bony landmarks. And so the other thing after this, we'll do the outside of the hand. Bony landmarks are high points. So for instance, if I had two hands up and <clears throat> I want to relate one hand to the other, for instance, that's a bony landmark there, and that's a bony landmark there because they're both thresholds, either wide points or high points or low points in, in the form. So I say this is a high point and this is a wide point. All right. Now, let's, these are also bony landmarks, but they're not as distinct because this one's obviously higher up. So that's one I can use to compare against another, another form adjacent from it, across from it, either higher or lower. On the body, those things are anywhere we have joints. And in animation, those are the parts that are articulated with the little glowing balls. So when they go into the motion detection room in the black suit, they turn the lights off and all you see are these balls moving in the air. They're, what they're recording are the bony landmarks in the articulation, articulated joints and how they function during certain actions. Uh, at SCAD, or SCAD, they call it, I don't know why I, was, I call it SCAD, mm -hmm. they call it SCAD. Uh, I had seen the, the animation room, apparently uh, they just did this film where they had a, a football player, huge football player, go in and he had to uh, go through the action. He was pulling on bungee cords or attached against the wall. So he's struggling against the bungee cords. I'll try to crawl. And because they were superimposing him into a character that, it, uh, that is towing a truck up a hill, transport truck. So you can't get a transport truck in the animation room, in the motion detection studio. So you have to, you have to simulate some kind of action that's similar. So when he's struggling, they're sort of pulling the motion that the articulated joints make. They can't see the muscles. They have to superimpose their own character onto it. But they can see what kind of stresses happen during trying to pull something. And so that motion looks natural when they throw some character that's a two-dimensional design character, you know, three-dimensional design uh, animated character on top. So. Those things, bony landmarks are very important. Elbows, what kind of parts of the elbows? This is the olecranon, right? We have the uh, the radius and ulna. Okay, so anyway, uh, the pisiform bone of the wrists, and we have um, the, uh, the acromion processes of the shoulder, right, or clavicles. We've got the trochanter on the hips. We've got the, uh, what do you call them here, the, um, uh, the, the, the iliac crests, right? Iliac crests, kneecaps, all right, ankles. Those are all points. So the same thing on the hand. When you look at the hand, try to think about where the bony landmarks relate to one another horizontally or vertically. And very simply, and, and I, I've noticed this before, these fingers are so similar that if you draw them the same, they come off in a picture as convincing. They're so similar. There's a very, very minute difference between your ring finger and your pointer finger. It's the big finger that's the mutant, and it is little twin over here. Okay, so that's another thing too. When you're trying them, these two are so similar. They're often going to line up with each other. And uh, anyway, I'll let you continue continue on your drawing. But I just want to point those things out. Now they don't bend the same, but proportionately they are the same. Quick. But similar. You can see it on your own hand. You guys have more long fingers too, so <clears throat> all right. Anyway, I'll let you go ahead and do that, and then we'll, we'll flip over and look at the other side. Then we're gonna, you know what I want to do? I want to just we're just gonna make up some hand stuff. You know, say, okay, so let's imagine two fingers holding a feather. All right, a hand holding a lead boulder. And we'll try to attach a wrist to it as well. Um, 
my teacher before taught me that no head can exist without the neck. So I also think that no hand can exist without the forearm, without the arm, and somehow, right? Because that's really what's your everything happening in here is coming from the forearm. Right. Yeah. It, like nothing can happen without it. Yeah. You know. You know what I thought of before when I was younger. It, it's very difficult for me to remember all the muscles of the forearm. So I thought about shaving my arm and getting a tattoo that was perfectly all of the brachioradialis, the extensor digitorium communis longus, all the flexor, radial flexor, radial extensor. You have two, like I said, abduction, extension, flexion. Uh, let's see, abduction, flexion, extension, and uh, da, 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 da. what do you call it again? What's the other one? Let's see if we got the tibia and fibula. So it's going to add a tibia and flexion, extension, abduction, and it's brilliant. Much it horizontal, vertical, and rotation, sort of in and out, up and down, side to side, rotate. Even our leg rotates mostly, right? Abduction, flexion, extension, contraction. So the same thing happens with our finger, but it's all controlled in the forearm. It's not controlled in the hand. Yeah. Right. So anyway, we'll do some stuff and try to get the hand. Let's just try to get this exercise done. I'll, I'll shut up for a bit, and I'll just sort of sketch my own thing over here. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Working the negative space, and I was thinking to make me want for myself here too. Working with this, uh, somehow you want these two to have a similarity. A little bit. Okay, so right now, if you look at your negative space, it's a bit too wide. All right, so we come down here. This looks great. This angles down a little more there. Then it drops. And think about just going around the outside edge a bit here. That's pretty good. It just looks like here, what you've missed on this one is the bend. And that bend. So that that space is closed in a little more. You go ahead and fix that. Sure. Did you guys like figure drawing last night? Yeah, when I find a figure drawing, I even have the like days where I'm like, hey, that looks all right. Or other days where you want to bash your face into the wall. Oh, so it wasn't yeah. one of those, was it? Ah, uh, you got kind of close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I've got to be honest, in my case, yeah, I found the, it's too claustrophobic for me. Really? The space, it was uh, too claustrophobic, I'm telling you. You're trying to crunch up on the couch. I like to stand. I like to use my arm. I like to stand back. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers. So, as they say, I, I thought it was, it was good enough for that, uh, that aspect. I think there's a little bit too much arbitrary talking, though. <laughs> it was really annoying. <laughs> yeah. And um, I, I, you know, sometimes people, I try not to do that too. But when you tell your own opinion, and it's only an opinion, it's not necessarily a fact. Yeah. And then you know, like it's something different from what they're saying. You know, uh, talking about what art cities that are better than others. <laughs> Um, yeah. Yeah. They all, they all talk. <laughs> it seemed to me like it went a little more talking than drawing. Uh, let's see. Well, that lines up with that. Oh, look at that. That's cool. My thumb there lines up right where my finger here begins. Oh, that's cool. The top of my thumb lines up where my finger begins to curl. Awesome. And then the other one's sort of right beside it. Oh, that's cool. That ball is up here. So I signed my contract yesterday and sent it in. 
Awesome. Yeah, well, well, you both died. For a scan, right? Yeah. No, How before. long is the contract? Oh, it's a year. It's re the contracts are only by year. Uh, they're renewable depending on whether you're, you know, whether it's working out, right? If you start uh, arguing with your, your boss, it's mm -hmm. obviously not going to work out, is it? And that's sort of tip lines up here. I'm not feeling this whole lot. You're not feeling that whole process. Let's do something else. And don't worry about it. It's just an exercise. Don't worry about it. And, and uh, you do something else. I mean, you're not bad. It's not, it's not bad, yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. This is actually a graphic design project also, even more so, because you do work a lot with flatness mm. in graphic design. Like, for instance, you see how his is coming along here. I'll just hold it for you. Yeah. And as he's going along, you can see that what he's doing is creating a positive negative space drawing. Should I raise this drawing? No, you know what you should do? Just trace it verbatim. Just trace it right out. Like put it underneath. Because then we'll work on value. We'll work on shading of it. Trace it perfectly. Are you guys staying uh, in town here with Garth? Um, yeah, you were staying with his parents. Okay. Who is that you want? Yeah, cool. Oh, good. And what did you guys, what do you feel that you learned last night? Uh, what was I going to say? I was thinking about this last night too. Well, the, the human body is very similar to the hand, and you still have to view it that way. Not like, uh, not really as a person, I guess. Uh, also, go a lot lighter with my content because I messed up in that. Yeah. And not to draw the head first. Yeah. Well, that's the biggie. Yeah. I mean, the head is the what third largest mass of the body. Would say it's like something like that. It depends. So male and female pelvis is slightly different, but the uh, rib cage obviously is the largest sort of mass or ovoid thoracic cage. So usually, you generally need to start with that. Also, a lot of, a lot of times, well, artists will start at the middle of the body. You start around this area, yeah, and then build your extensions off of that. If you were going to, if I give you a lump of clay and I said, um, build me a, uh, build me a character that um, overeats and oversleeps and uh, has three arms. Okay. All right. Well, what's the first thing you would do? Probably build the torso. All right. Yeah. Just. Biggest toe. The, uh, the biggest toe? Yeah. You start with the biggest toe? No, it started with the torso. And you build it right off of the toe into something. So it would start, <laughs> it would start like this. It would be like this large, fat toe with a big toenail on it. Yeah. Right? And then it would just sort of go off of that into something else, right? Exactly. Like... That's what I was thinking. But it has to have three arms. Oh, yeah. And lying down. A oh, one arm lying down? Because he was sleeping. Would it have eyes? I think so. Would it be happy or sad? It would be neutral. Would it have ears? Okay. <laughs> I, think, I think it should have ears. How about a nose? Yes or no? Yeah. 
Yeah? All right. I would only has one ear. <laughs> it's a picture. I like it. This is the funnest thing we that I love to do is we just come up with stuff to draw. And they a lot of times they turn into full of blown up projects and some students have developed characters out of it and ended up that's their thesis. I have a student that has two uh, has an alter ego. It's two characters that are part of himself, that he feels are part of himself. One is the courageous uh, kind of hero guy that is, um, he, you know, stops bank robbers and he saves women from burning towers. And then there's the other part of him, that, which is uh, pathetic, you know, stays in his room, bites his fingernails. Uh, he lives on pizza and Coca-Cola. Um, doesn't leave the house because he has to use the restroom often. Things like that. So he creates these two characters in one uh, in, in, in the narrative. And I, I'll give you his name so you guys can look at his website if you want. Yeah, it's Chris Misi, Misimo. Okay, so let's look here now into your hand. And you've got yours traced out, so we can do that too. What I want you to do is look for parts of the phalanges, parts of these articulated joints that line up with each other horizontally and vertically. Okay, for instance, here's one thing I noticed, right? This axis through the center of the composition, the center of the picture, and here's one through the center this way. So it gives us sort of a crosshairs. Now, on my drawing, I notice that where my fingernail where my fingernail just sort of dipped in and became bone here, although it's all bone. But where my fingernail ended, it was exactly horizontally across from where my first curl occurred. I also can see that where the second curl occurs is vertically in line with where my wrist is, from where my wrist to the palm of my hand is. So on your drawing, go ahead right now and look for relationships horizontally and vertically between those components or parts. Let me start drawing like the thing on the glass. Or? Well, use the drawing on the glass, but draw it on your paper. Okay. Okay. So you're going to fill the things in, uh, draw the parts in, but I want you to have these little subtle ghost lines that show that you understand. I want you to show. It's like a math question. Show me your steps. I don't know if you guys even do that anymore. You just pull out your calculator and go bang, 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 sine, cos, tan, finished, <laughs> A, right? But go like this. Just let your drawing. Show me your marks that indicate that you can see the relationship between one part and another. Now, they might even be small. I'm not, you don't have to go right through the whole paper. Let me do another one here just so you get the idea. Um, let's see. Where the palm of my hand is. Okay. Oh, that curl that came in the palm of my hand is vertically aligned with here. So that tells me where my hand then began to curl inward. So that's a point and that's a point. So these two relate to each other. I'll draw in a little mark there and I'll make that sort of soft curl. Okay. What we're doing is we're deconstructing the hand down into horizontals and verticals. And I'm showing you this because again, the hand is a microcosm of what the body has. If you guys can understand it with the hand, you'll be able to do it with so if I'm standing like this, doing something crazy, and you go, "What? how do I draw that? What you can do is look, does that line up with my other shoulder horizontally? Okay? And this is how you're going to get proportions, because that's what generally what people's weaknesses are, is proportion. Also, is getting the natural kind of pose, because one part is lower than another because the body is doing a certain thing. You know, that's another thing. Um, we can we can make this curve here. I Maybe mean, that's synonymous with um, I don't know an, an armpit with a lot of laying backwards. Uh, protuberances like this, bulging parts, uh, the, the um, clavicles. You know, so I want you to go ahead and do that. So I want you to find the parts in your hand that line up horizontally and vertically. So that one was vertical. That told me that that's where my curl is there. <laughs> And I look here, I'm gonna look at my pinky and I come across and I don't really see anything lining up horizontally. 
what lines up vertically? Oh, this little chip here. So I can drop a plumb line down, fishing line, do -do 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 down, and that tells me, oh, there, and then across from my thumb here is about where my pinky begins. So my pinky is now there, and I can draw that in. You understand? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. You want me to draw some my negative space drawing? Yeah, draw it on your negative space drawing. Okay. So you're using this, you need to use this here. And uh, we're you gonna need use some isopropyl alcohol to line it up here. Uh, I have a uh, table piece over here. Yeah, that's probably better because then he doesn't have to see that thing. I got one here. I'll pop it there you go. On a white page in behind that? Absolutely. Make it smart. Okay, so that lines up dot 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 oh with the curl under there horizontally. Let's see vertically. I'd mentioned before where my pointer finger. There's a there's a a culmination point right here at my wrist. Those two line up vertically. And let's see the tip of my thumb. If I come across that way, okay, that lines up here with my second finger. Now also, if I come across, it lines up with where the curve is the greatest to the bulgiest part on that finger. And let's see, vertically as we come down, ah, that's where my palm of my hand and my pinky finger culminate. So this is all you're doing. You're looking at relationships of points. You're scanning across, and you can draw it right on your, on your glass and then translate it to your page, or you can draw it right on your page like I was doing here, like this one. Clear as mud, right? Yep. Okay. Aaron, you mind if I put a little bit more coffee in here? Yeah, go for it. Thanks. I always want to take the lid off and keep forgetting that's not necessary. If it grinds in it, if you do that, that'd be nasty. There's the microwave there, you need to warm it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's so hot. So do you see how we kind of need to have an understanding of how to draw, basically, before we can get into a lot of anatomy, right? So something you might want to look into in the future is just getting a good anatomy book there at the hand. But first, let's just develop your drawing ability. So what's his next step? It seems like he's not sure what to do next. Here. What's that? Looks like you stand to need some guidance what to do next. Oh. Um, I just have been doing this. You see here? 
So do you, do you see what you need to do, or do you feel I like... I need to, yeah. Okay, so what's, what do you need extra so. step? Oh, I see what you did. You did a clock angle in that one. Uh, what I was trying to do is get you to see the relationship of the digits to each other. Remember um, the segments? So we've got sort of one here. And this is what we worked on yesterday. We got another one here. Did you want circles in? Well, Matt, you see that you've got them because those are where the creases of your hands are. And every time you've got one of those creases, it's because the ellipse of the phalanges do. So what I was trying to get you to see is where they begin and end in terms of where they line up with each other. And if you want to, you can fill in the volume a little bit like that too. Right here. It's like a map. Yeah. And that's called a clock angle. We're only looking at 180 degrees and 90 degrees. Okay. That's all. We're just looking at horizontals and verticals. Actually, let me see. So once he finds that, what would he do next? Start drawing yeah, the old or what do you do next? He's good. He's got it here. You're just looking. You're just looking at. It's a practice in studying to uh, the eye moving to figure out relationships between one unit and another, and this is transferable into the whole figure. It's transferable to a, to a space. So if I keep if there happens to be a chair in the room, and I'm here. And you need to figure out my scale. Okay, my scale. Well, obviously the chair is designed to fit our our scale, right? But I'm I'm here in this position. I'm not in this position. I'm not in that position. And the chair is not smaller or bigger. And I'm okay. So what you would look for is if I'm sketching um, this space here, this composition. How does the chair relate to parts any part of my body? So. Let's, for instance, look at something right across. Does the, the uh, bend area of my arm line up horizontally with the chair? So that when you're drawing me, you know you have to put the chair in the composition, but you want to see how do I make the chair the right size? So I scan across the body here. Oh, it's the right size. Okay, and then back. So that way you know that my upper body goes so much further up taller than the chair. Like, for instance, last night when you were drawing the head, and you started with the head, what happened was the head was huge, the rest of the body was small. But if you would have looked and saw, how does the outside of the head line up with the hip? Then you would have knew to make it smaller. So this is what this is for, this exercise with the end. It's just to get you to see that the relationship of parts, in order to get proportion, you can scan from one side to the other, horizontally or up and down vertically to see where uh, parts begin and end. That's all. So you, if you want to, you can go ahead and, you know, you can fill in a little more volume if need be. Let's see in my hand here, where's my sketch? So now that you know the relationships, you can add them to the job. Yeah. yeah, so first find the major structure, right? Where the, where the fingers join to the palm. Right. Find that. Start finding where the fingertips are, all those you know, major structures. And then you can go in another layer of detail, right? Okay. So once you have where everything is, then you can start saying, okay, let's maybe look for some of those voids. Or, okay? So you're going to use where all these things are located. Because your negative space doesn't tell the whole story yet, right? right. Exactly. And get them to do some 
some depth with their line work, just so they get some of the concept. Obviously, they've got a lot more homework they got to do. They're practicing to get ready for that portfolio, but where at least if they've got some skill they can take away with them. Right. Right. Actually, looks pretty cool. You know those uh, dolls? That's what it looks like. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's sort of robotic almost. You could put wires and wires and hinges in there. You like, like uh, you know, I remember Terminator when he when the skin came off. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that cyborg arm. That was awesome. They actually was the first one. He peeled his own arm apart. Yeah. Didn't he? Didn't he, 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 he did. He had to cut his. He had to peel into his own arm. Didn't he? And then he popped out his eye. And they popped out his eye. Yeah. What was the one where he had to pull out the cherry detector from his nose? That was a different one. Or was that, you know, that was solid. That was a different one. See you at the party, big dog. <laughs> All right, they pushed him off the elevator. Yeah. And so, those are great movies because they do implement early CG computer graph, computer animation. But the, 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 the mechanics of, of the, the cyborg are, are very similar to the human body, but they're simplified into geometric metallic shapes and forms that kind of anyway it looks like that <laughs> all right anyway so this is uh the, the idea here was proportion scale and uh as i mentioned before relationships horizontally vertically from things. Right? It's like, um, we call it Mondrian lines. Now, and, 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 and listen, this is really important. It's only at one object. This is important when you're doing a whole composition. We've got many, many things that are in. And this is something that uh, it's a foundations drawing exercise in college standard is when you've got to draw a whole bunch of things or you've got to draw something that has to be proportionate, you need to understand how to relate one component to the other component that's maybe at the other side of the whole page. Okay? That's really what this is for. You guys can maybe work on that again at home because it is your own hand. Sometimes I've had us people work in partners, so they're actually looking at someone else's hand or they're someone else's body, their foot. Uh, with my anatomy students, I often have them draw each other's feet and one poses and the other one. We'll draw them. Okay. What I was thinking that we'll do is we'll go through a few actions. Let's think of some actions. And maybe we'll come up with some sketches that uh, can express those actions. Like a, a thumb in your hand and then crushing the phone. Crushing the phone. Yeah. Okay. So what was the first what would be the first form you'd start with with a crushing action? What's the hand doing during the crushing action? It's crunching together. Right. So then, what's the first form that you would have? Something like that, obviously, right? Yeah. And then together. Yeah. And then together. Okay, so then where? Crushing action. And is it your own hand or is it someone else's? That depends if it's going like that or like that. Right? Yeah, I guess like this. So your own hand. Yeah. Your own hand crushing your foam. So what happens in the crush? What's the major muscle that's doing the, the crushing? Yeah, okay. yeah. That would be the thumb, right? Yeah. A brevis minimum uh, um, abductor. I wrote it down yesterday. I don't even remember now. Okay, so that has got to come on over top, right? Then the other part, the other muscle over here. So we've got these two. Yeah, no. Yes. We can work on that later. Okay, I'll just like, I finished it. Oh, that's okay. okay. I'm just, we're just going to play here for a minute. So we're, we're talking about play. actions, poses. And when you, if you want to make it like crushing, let me maybe add a little geometry to it. Should have done it kind of, when you when you add angles you give some strength yeah. and if you do look at your thumb like that for instance you can see that there is this wedge 
sort of wedges on it, like that, right? That part, the other part. Okay, then the next thing, of course, you've got the object itself has to fit in there. So you said, what, a cell phone? Could be. Well, let's see how that would be. Let's I'm just going to say if that's the cell phone. So if it's a cell phone that's a rectangle, that means that the fingers will not be open. They can't. They're only going to be open if it's a rounded object. So there's something like a sphere. Hand likes to hold it. Look at how perfect the sphere that is on the inside of your face. Okay, but on it, it's actually more difficult. So it's something that's a rectangle, you're dealing then with pretty symmetrical fingers because they have to follow the form. And if your form is rectangular, cell phone. And again, a cell phone has to be in perspective too. That means it's going to converge as it's moving away from you in space. It actually wouldn't be that long either, would it? And as we start out, it's generally good to start out with Pretty rectilinear lines. You can round them off later because you know the style of the cell phone is sort of rounded off. That's pretty easy to do. Just like when you draw a car, you know, no modern cars or contemporary cars are always rounded and aerodynamic. You generally start out with a box and you'll learn that after too. Okay, so then what else? You get around these off here. So then the fingers, you notice that the thumb goes over top. So obviously this is not a powerful squeezing action. It would have to be this because you need that's the one that's got to do the work. You notice too that what happens is that when I thumb here, the ball is up and over, this muscle's flexed. So that's got to come up over the thumb itself. You know, yeah, again, you know, these are things that you can erase later. It's always kind of good to maybe overdraw a little bit. It's not really a fine art, it's sort of animating. So this has got to go underneath my thumb. And I, I'm going to keep it kind of more geometric. See how I'm sort of drawing the fingers? This is called dynamic figure drawing, like dynamic. It's not realistic, it's robotic. And it gives strength more so right? to, to what you're doing. And let's see where we have to converge again, just like we did with the phone. They have to go off the vanishing points, right? Because that's uh, it's going back in two point perspective. And in some cases, it could be three point also. In some cases, it could be one. So, all right, so the, the next finger, of course, is higher. We can create a bit of a path where to go. The pinky finger is going to tuck underneath as well. So let's go with the second uh, big finger here. Come across, down. Now, this is going to come longer. And actually, in my case, it looks like my thumb is taking over it a little bit. We'll sort of keep with this geometric idea. Get some hard lines in there and make it strong. So both the next finger, maybe it could be a little wider. Now, in my case here, it looks like this finger's come down longer. Any idea what that would be? What does that one look like? It's coming. That's not the middle finger. Because this one's like pushed up by the object. Yeah. Well, this one here, because of the muscle being on this side of your hand, right, it's pushed back the middle finger. If you look here at my hand, it's actually flatter here. So since it's flatter, it allows these fingers to come further down the object than it normally would. So that's why it looks appears to be that this finger here is longer, and it's actually not. It's just that it's more... It's straighter. Actually, you kind of come off the hill a little bit there. Geometric. It's not bent as much. The most bent one is this one. The least bent is going to be the last two. 
because they're not really doing the squeezing action so much. Okay, so even this arch here is stronger. This one's not quite as strong. And I don't know, everyone's got these sort of different sort of finger types. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> put the, the bulge of the skin over there because that's going to make some more squeeze. And then, of course, I want to emphasize the tendons. Now, I didn't make them look so realistic here. You've got one major tendon there, then you've got a little negative space, and you've got your other one on the other side. Remember what I told you? The hand can't do anything without the muscles of the wrist and the muscles of the forearm. Okay, so if you want to create the sense of the pressure on it, all this happens all the time, and you even get it on the other side of your work. Is you got to create that tension in there as well. So anyway, and then of course you go in and you clean up and you butter things up and you shape it. And actually, to be honest, what should happen is that it actually broke. And you, you actually did with your cobra grip, your kung fu cobra grip. You busted it, snapped. You squeezed it. Or the other thing too. Could it up though? Here. Oh, it could. It could go up too. Sure. Or it could melt. You actually had, uh, you know, sort of maybe sort of dripping. Starts to melt. Like uh, you got a chocolate, what are those um, taffy chocolate bar things? And then you kind of you have to create some more some more blooping. And then your line weight, of course, you can make it heavier down here to give the sense of gravity, pulling it down, making it more soggy. You can go sharper. Back here, or crisp, right? Or sharp and crisp. We'd have some tone on the inside. You can always go back and erase, right? Or you scan and clean up and Photoshop. And there you go. And then there you go. But actually, it's someone else's job. You know, your job is just to come up with stuff. So what are some other uh, actions you can take out? Let's maybe we can, we can do one together. And some of them could be quite simple. This move looks pretty strong. Uh, the other thing, again, you mentioned line weight. We do have light source coming at it. You would definitely have to sharpen up or clean up these outside edges here. They would have to be thin, right? But when you want to create strength, you definitely you should use geometry because it looks more solid. And you wouldn't use something rubbery. It has, if you use geometry, it has a sense of um, having uh, having strength of, of structure. I don't So what else can you guys think of? Do it on your own. Do it on your own. Come up with your own. What do you think? Don't handle like an action pose? An action pose. Doing something. Okay. okay. Going through, going through some type of stuff. Oh, yeah, great. That's what Rebecca awesome. chose to do. Um, she decided she was going to break a wand, like a, a magic wand. And so she took a lot of reference photos. She, she drew her hand pushing on a stick like this until her thumb went, you know, numb to get this. Do you see the reaction here, guys? The skin collapses and it goes around. Okay. Beautiful. And then she took just a ton of photos of snapping a twig to, to try to get what happens when you're, you're done snapping. So, um, so that's a little bit more unusual to, to see something like that. 
Uh, and you see the reaction here. I think she could have a bit more tension here, I'd say. A stronger line there to really show that tension. And maybe here too, the after effect. I think that, that doesn't show enough reaction there. Release, that the hand seems a little inert. Could have a bit more tension. But you see some of the tension lines here. So she could have maybe emphasized that a bit more, but at least she's just thinking about what happened. She did a lot of reference research and reference photos. Okay. So. Did you have some other ones? Um, did she have any other ones I looked up? No. Only one, one they, they asked for one example of the yeah. portfolio. So let's think about, think about some actions. Maybe just look at your own hand. Think about some cool before and after actions, and then Jordan will be able to help you with that. that. That even if we're not coming out of this thing with a totally finished drawing, you've got a really good idea of how to do it well. Right? So start dreaming up and some cool actions. Look around you, look behind you. Okay? Look behind you. She's supporting herself up. Again, always keep in mind when grasping the happens, the thumb, especially if it's bent, the thumb goes over top of the fingers. Can you see here? Thumb over the fingers. He's holding a plate, thumb is on top, hands underneath, because that's sort of the lifting action. So you don't lift, generally you don't lift something up like that. You lift up like that because you use the fingers to scoop. Let's look over here. These hands are flat against the surface. Pushing outward. These are simple hands, but they're effective. You don't need to have five fingers or four fingers and one thumb. Sometimes you can use three, and you see that animation. Sometimes you can use two. Two with a thumb. I've seen two, and I've seen three with a thumb. Look at his hand. <clears throat> What's nice over here is that because he's squeezing the shovel, the knuckles are emphasized. And when you're squeezing something, you notice, you see in my hand, the knuckles start to come, up, come forward. It's because the tendons are causing a little bit of a, an inflation over top of the knuckles themselves. So he's articulated that. Why? He's hanging on to a shovel. Shovel's a tool. If so you're squeezing the tool, it's going to be different than when you're squeezing the balloon. You're holding a feather. You see on this side, too. So he's emphasized the, the knuckles as could be sort of all these strong cylindrical forms. The only thing that's a little bit weird on this for me is that the thumb is on the outside of the shovel. Generally, it would be underneath. You see, you see the difference out here versus under. Yeah. Okay. Uh, look hard at that. Yeah. Well, maybe he doesn't care or whatever, but that's something to be conscious of because he's he's got it. Actually, almost looks like he only has three fingers and then the thumb coming up over top. Now, this is kind of cool, though. I like that quite a bit because he's really got the bend there and the finger and the light source is coming up in that direction. So you can see the thumb is underneath, so it does look like it is around the shovel. Look at her hand. Look at the difference between that and that. You see him. He's, she's holding on to something that's precious. Can you see how her fingers are cradling it delicately? And it doesn't give a sense that it's very heavy either. If it's a crystal or something, it could be translucent, could be hollow. It's very delicate. So you see the way her hands are almost snake-like or serpentine as it's holding up, as they're holding on to that object. Let's go to something more realistic here in this picture. A little bit of baby's hand. Again, what's wonderful, we see the curve that we're talking about, the way the knuckles curve. And the tips of the fingers curve, they all arc. And the baby's hand is also like this. It's just placed. It's not squeezing, gripping, grabbing, holding, lifting, nothing. It's just placed softly. His hand is cradling. You get a little bit of it. You see the fingers are putting pressure against the back of the baby's bottom in order to hold the baby in place. So you can see there the difference of those two types of hands. Let's look over here. And we had looked at that one. Um, actually, is that? Oh, I was wondering if that was a hand. I don't think so. It's his hair. It's his hair, yeah. <laughs> I actually thought it was a hand sort of waving or moving. Uh, this one is holding a, a wrench, it looks like. 
So that's another nice position too. You can see it here if, I'm, if I do this with the cup. Uh, this type of position. So you'll notice that the hand, the thumb and the fingers are both coming down. And your the flexor on your forearm is pulling upward, sort of like that. The natural one is sort of cradled. You notice that the wrist is coming out, the hand tips back inward, right? So think about just uh, do even little tiny sketches, just like this size. Think of a couple little, I mean, not even that size, tiny. Just do little sketches of you know, whatever, of, of, of an action of some sort that you can think of. Now I can put on a couple here, clutching, squeezing, swinging, holding, pointing, lifting, waving. Another one, yeah, a good one is waving, because if you want to create the motion of waving and use Conte, you draw it, erase it, draw it again, erase it, draw it again, erase it, and it gives this blur effect. You have someone at the door again. It gives that, you know, that blur effect. Let's see what you guys can do. Just tiny little little sketches. Use your hand as reference, or you use your hand as reference. Yeah. Do, do, or even just uh, just try to think of it in imagination terms. Um, he did this yesterday, and you generally just create a toy, and you can make your fingers come off of it. Uh, let's say, and if I have if I have the fingers spread apart. I'm just doing this actually with this hand. Just doing that. Okay. You can keep them simple. And then if you want to, again, uh, we, we added the elliptical parts. Make sure they're in radius. Remember? Like that. You know how easy this is. See, it's just it's very simple how you can get, uh, especially these sort of animated hands. And if you want to make them boxy, you can do so. This is just making sure that you're getting the arch that you need. It may have been a bit long on that side. All right. And then you know, no, no, no. It's just a hand doing nothing. Squeezing ones are, are easier. Easy. Yeah, sure. They're easier. And the squeezing ones are easier because you're just doing a ball and you get your thumb muscle. And then the fingers are rotated around again or geometric, right? Just like the one I had just finished doing. They sort of fan inward all the time. You see what I'm doing here? because the hand always has to be somewhat in a circular motion. You see? And the pinky finger aims inward. They all aim inward, this direction, towards the core and the center. Okay? They don't, they don't go, <clears throat> unless you've got something geometric in your hand. Then they go parallel. Generally speaking, they always want to curl inward. And look at how they collapse in together, almost that each one has its own negative space. So they're all, they're all curling inward to a point, a Death Star. Go ahead, just do some, just do a bunch of random sketches. Start out with a, start out with uh, just very small. Start out with a little bit and think, okay, so what is it going to be doing? Oh, it's going to point. Okay, what happens in a point? All right, so the thumb, again, is important. The point is a point. The fingers have to radiate inward. That's a fact. So we got obviously our action finger. And our 
thumb is always important. And then we have our fingers doing nothing or not too much. And I got the palm of the hand. Now you can still say, look, oh, that's too long of a finger or whatever. But again, these are animated gestures. Oh, wait, I screwed up. The thumb, in this case, is going to go up like that and offer. And then you can, you know, you change it as you go. Let's say your storyboard, uh, your client says, no, I need it to, you know, do that or whatever. You can just change it as you go. Just do a bunch of little hand gestures. Okay. Okay. So we come up with that. Can we do like one of these? Here you go. Sure. Okay, so I think that's a good goal for you guys today is just to play with a bunch of different ideas. And real quick, it's not about making great drawings yet. Quick ideas, figure out an action. Um, and then learning how to draw that action. So we'll maybe if we get one more, you know, decent drawing today after you've played with a few ideas. Okay, so that these can just be little tiny thumbnail sketches just to think of some thumbnail ideas. Sketch, yeah, thumbnail right. sketches, like little tiny sketches. Where we're not worried about the exact proportion, we're just trying to, to try with different actions, and then we're gonna choose an action, and then Jordan can help you draw it when realistically. Yeah. More realistically. Portfolio-wise. Yeah. So don't be taking time with this drawing. Okay? This is just, this is how he's playing a little loose, little tiny things. And come up with an idea so we can learn how we can do that. So some ideas um, that students have done in the past, like I said, they've been flipping coins, they've been the running water, uh, lighting the lighter, and we've been trying to encourage our students to think of something a little more interesting, like uh, Rebecca chose to break a magic wand. What other more interesting actions that really show something interesting that has real story to it? But even just for today, if it's any kind of action that's noticeable, Jordan here can help you learn how to draw that. Okay, and well, how would the lines react and all of that? Okay. Can you hear that? Oh, there was one girl. She shot an elastic right at the viewer. That was kind of neat. Yeah, that's cool. And and you know the reaction and the tension. For sure. That was too. And a lot of foreshortening. It was a mm. it was a cool shot. You know, so what can you do? That's interesting. So yeah, you could just get them to do one drawing where they're thinking about action and then how to handle that as an example that they can take with them to work on more in the future. Just leave that with you guys. Take care of something. Thank you. 
University, Florida International University, New World School of the Arts, and uh, University of Miami. Okay. Yeah. One of my friends goes to that's Miami School. What's it called? Miami International University of Art and Design. Oh, no, no. Mm -hmm. There's still one. A I M I U. Here's the big one in Miami, the big like, college. That's University. the University of Miami. Yeah, it's the largest one. The Florida International is large too. Miami Dade College is probably some of the top few largest colleges in the U.S. 45,000 students. Are they D1? Pardon me? Are they D1? What's D1? Like in sports? Oh, no. Miami Dade College. Um, is it just a big college? Yeah. yeah. They're, it's a, I think it's a two and three year college. Yeah, I'm just waiting here back to see people. Uh, so that's nice. I don't hear back from that's nice. Yeah, you got that idea of the ellipses down quite well. Yeah. And then when you connect them together with the consistent sort of line. I just prefer to find those When you're later, when you're drawing the figure, I have a uh, I teach students the gesture with this mark. Figure eight. You know why? Real simple. Okay. Rear page, by knee, by calf. Figure eight. Figure eight. I got three figure eights, and I got the human body. I got, I got the black legs. Everything, right? Figure eight, figure eight, figure eight. I will see you at 12. So, okay. Anyway, that's and that's some kind of thing. Work with the board, you guys too much. Is that what you want? I'll get you next week. Okay. 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 Okay.
these are, don't even, I don't even need those fingers almost. They're just sort of there. I actually hear what I've done is I push against the object to get enough force to pop it. Even then, I still can't. This is, doesn't take a lot of force, though. Anyway, that's another one. Flip. Flip cap. Flip. Yeah. Well, I don't really understand this. How do like, colleges know that like, it runs application or something? In general. Uh, consistency. Oh, so like, yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel like I would just do that. I'll tell you something. I had a student before that um, had a great drawer as a roommate. A student decided they would take an art class because they thought it would be uh, a fulfilling for their humanities requirement. Mm -hmm. They were coming in with wonderful homeworks, but I didn't see them produce very well in class, so I started to wonder, what is going on here? And I found out that the, the roommate was an excellent drawer who had taken a few drawing classes before, and uh, it was working for me, so yeah. it was pretty good. Okay, so here's what, again, keep in mind what happens. Okay, so you can't see your thumb too much there, but on the edges, I'm not going to draw it. But, well, I'll just, I'll just show you. Right here to there, because the pressure, let's think transparently. You want to imagine that you can see right through your thumb. So the bottom of the pencil is pressing against the skin on the other side. That's causing the skin to bulge, right? Mm -hmm. And then towards the tip, it starts to channel backward and becomes narrow again. And then on this finger, you're going to have a little pudginess that occurs too. Because so the tighter you squeeze, the more the bulge will boink, boink. Mm -hmm. That happens. And that's what you said too. If you were doing shading, you leave that like to, to yeah. get the gloves on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you could actually you, you actually press really hard. You you press a lot harder in that contact point to show that there's pressure being made. Okay. What's the other one? What's that thing called? When you do it to your, your classmate, you do it at the bottom of their earlobe, and you're sitting behind them. Flicking? Stone finger or something. Right? Oh, that's what I remember. You know how it's the most? It's good to me in all, all the time in school. Like, pinch your triceps. Uh huh. It hurts so much. You can even do it to yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It hurts a lot. Well, that's a new one. That's for your generation. Tricep pinching. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Pardon me? You can check if someone's conscious by doing that. Oh, okay. Passed out, they won't respond. Really? Yeah. Oh. It hurts so much. Like it won't make you feel actually like medically, like some paramedics will do it. Really? Yeah. On your triceps? On my tricep or a top? Hmm. Because it's so tender. Whatever. Because it's painful. So you can't you can't really fake it because you would respond. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was some actions, right? Yeah. So nice. it, like play around with different actions. Choose an action that you'd like his help on. So what do you think we should do? We get an hour left. Do you want them to draw? Should we have a draw? Yeah, one, I think oh, we should do one formal drawing. One formal drawing. One page to the other, just like this. Yeah. Okay. So that this is a good example of where a preparation for what we're doing. Yeah. Set a new type of music or something. I don't know. I think they might be doing that. Yeah. Sounds like thrilling metal. Yeah, but let's let's aim for this. I mean, what we do is anatomically. 
You see how it looks nice here is you can actually see where the, the phalanges are joined to the wrist. Uh, one, one thing, yeah. you have to realize that the radius of the ulna bone, uh, the radial bone is a, a bowl and it rotates like that. Right. Okay, so which one in, in the forearm is the radius, which is the ulna? Do you remember? Uh, Almost the outside one. Okay, this is a, a radiating to radiate, rotating to radiating. So as you're rolling in, what happens is bone here rolls nicely. You can see the drawing of that's been emphasized. And you can see how the thumb is pocketed or packed right in there. So this is what I'll help you with. So once you get the action that you need to get down, like for instance, this is a snap thing. You've got a few of them there. Uh, I like that bang one. However, it's not. Um, yeah. How would you do the next one? Oh, uh, first one would be like sort of like that. Uh, sure. yeah, the other one, the last one would be like bang. All right, so two fingers. So you need both hands. So you want to go like that first, and then bang. Maybe something like that. Yeah. But well, I know that was just like rough idea. Kind of rough idea. Okay. Um, how about the flicking action? You see, this is an actual action, so that's a snap occurring. Holding, snapping. So for the next hour, we get two pages to do one on each side. And what I would help you with is just make sure we get the correct uh, anatomy for that. Like where the tendons and, and, and uh, the bones are touching the surface. If you want to do long, use that hand or just uh, put the blue pencil on the yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I use the same materials that you've been using. Like what's expected in the portfolio is the blue yeah. line and, and pencil. It's funny um, because we learned red line. I don't know if blue is funny. It's some fun. some yeah. use red, some use yeah. blue. Uh, it's quite it's used a lot uh, because it's not a photo, right? Yeah. Blue. Yeah. Um, so start drawing, like pick an action, start drawing it bigger once you decide on your action. So one of the things important in uh, in animation is sort of understanding where these two bony landmarks are in relation to each other, your ankle bones too, right? So, because that tells a lot. Because one's a little lower, one's a little higher, right? One sticks out more. Than the other. So, those are things that he can help you with because it tells us a lot how, whether it's intention or not, the ankle, the rest of those things. So, so, pick an action. Any action doesn't have to be the one that's going to be in your portfolio, but it's an opportunity to learn about how to draw this one, right? And then we do like these. Like one round, like the before action and the one for the action. Let's focus on the action drawing right now because yeah. I don't know if we'll get to the second drawing by the time you do your learning and do it. That could take an hour. Okay. If you can't get to two, great. Let's, let's, how about we pick the action because that's the one that has a lot of attention. What do you think? Yeah, this is like for instance, he's, he's already kind of on the right path here. Yeah. Um, let's say that the next one that snapped in the center. What would happen? Well, how do you, can you tell unless you actually snap the real thing? Yeah, that's why she did so many. Yeah, photos. so what, what you could do, let's say for instance, is something like that, it's collapsible. Uh, no, that wouldn't work either. You'd so this is what she did in class something. with us. Yeah. This one she did on her own because she did a lot of research mm -hmm. to be able to do that. Right. So, you know, it could be that it, it might be the before. Take either the before mm -hmm. or after. And then Jordan's going to help you with that, okay? Yeah, because it's that, that pretty good. I mean, you could use some cleaning up. Is it too thin in here? Hmm? I'm sorry? Is it too thin in here? Like the width here? No, your hand is actually, that's, it looks, uh, it has a similarity to your anatomy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thin. Well, the only thing that you, what you would do is increase. You see on hers, what's nice is that in the increase in density of line weight in areas that are bending or the action areas. I do think maybe it doesn't need to be quite so hard around the outside here, but definitely in the inside, you can see the line is, yeah. is, uh, is heavier. And that's the important thing too, is to give that sensation that um, there's, a, there's a curling occurring. It, the darker line emphasizes the action and emphasizes the fact that light it hits the outside, but it's not hitting the inside. And then lighten around the, 
these outside outside parts too. And then you have to think about how to continue that line a little bit more back into the form. If you are squeezing, if you, if you look at my hand like this, see how dark that crease is. You have to look at your own hand to see. I know you're younger, so you're not going to have the same uh, sort of dark lines. In I guess you could use two hands. I'm in this way too much work though. Yeah, I'm going to build a little grade. Stop. I can help you guys draw metal underneath your wrist too, if you want. I'm just kidding. That's what I got. I've got two screws in here. Do you want um, thing? Do you like metal stick to you? I got metal. I have inside the cut. Put back four pieces of bone into one clamp. And then had to screw two of those pieces of bone to the to the major radius bone. So my pronation and supination is called protein. Protein is to roll in and to supinate is rolling out. It took me a long time in therapy in order just to do this. And you take that action for granted. Thank goodness it wasn't my drawing hand. But after a period of time, um, you should be able to draw with your opposite hand if you know the information here. It just it doesn't feel as natural, that's all. It's not as smooth and fluid. So sometimes you might want to practice. Um, yeah. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Anderson and Andy Ferrari is a good book. I like this one. This is one I use to teach with. Because it's very boring and black and white. Um, I actually often have the students have the book open uh, right beside them as they're working on their uh, figure drawings. Let's look here for a second. That was a great book, especially the fact these are obviously workers' hands. I'm not really doing any sort of pose in here, but you can tell the workers' hands very, very wrinkled. You can almost see that the cross contour lines, you guys know what those are, right? Cross contour lines, sort of the ellipses that continuously go through. Right. Almost they're right there, a pair in his hands, cross contour lines. I'm sort of relaxed. Again, as I mentioned before, here's the action of pronating and supinating. Of the radius and all and interacting with each other to give that uh, that twisting motion. Okay, lateral uh, lateral twist. And then so here, next few pages, some hand gestures. This one's sort of an open one. You notice the classical hand gestures; they're always sort of poetic or kind of dangly, not really. You know, sort of, but they're they're usually um, in academia. They always try to show the hand open uh, to show that the artist was so skilled at doing the hands and how skilled they are. And that was a kind of a sign, is to keep things open and very um, sort of poetically placed and in the air, but not even the nails. Right? So not looking feminine in their uh, their position. Sometimes. Anyway, so a couple of hands now. I think we will find here uh, some examples of it's not a very um, expressive sort of position here. It's normal, but you won't find that often in classical art rendering because it's not very uh, um, expressive. Uh, it's not very uh, revealing. So you'll notice that they'll, even those just turn it slightly this way. That happens quite a bit. Look at how cylindrical those are. Even the veins are articulated here, but you can definitely see the tendons and how they radiate from that one point. That's the extensor digitorium communis longus muscle I mentioned. Yeah. That all of the tendons are radiating to each phalange in the end. And even the thumb. I like how the thumb is sort of more knobby. Here you can see it deconstructed, the skin removed. 
as it's coming down the center and going to each one of the fingers. Allows you to do a little bit of opening and closing as well as contracting the sway. And this we got the palm side. You can see why on the palm side, I had you guys draw first the large kind of ovoid or square, in your case, uh, a rectangle or rectangular hand. First form is this, that's the macro. The relationship spatially is one to one ratio, meaning that the length of the phalanges is equal to the length of the metacarpals as they go to the wrist radius and all that. So first, second thing you're drawing, that very large thumb muscle. Say that's the next bulk that we have. And, uh, and after that certain area there, then we can begin by looking at the arc. You can see that here in this picture as well. So that all of the phalanges are in an arc and then each separate unit or digit on the phalanges is in an arc radiating. Around. You think it, our hand really wants to hold the ball all the time. Yeah. I think that's why we survived as a dominant animal because we could throw rocks. <laughs> I don't know, that's just a joke. Here it is with the skin on, here's with the skin off. That's what you're looking at. Why you have that little shadow in your hand is because there's a pocket in there where uh, the, the muscle is not as pronounced. Also, what's nice is that you can see the striations in the muscle, so you can tell the directional flow of the fibers of the muscle are going outward from the center towards the outside, towards the outside. And you can see that very nicely here in these drawings, too. I like the thumb and see it, and really see the unit of the knobbiness in the end as it separates from the Oh, here's another one. We did something similar to that kind of pose. Something like this. Again, you see how it wants to lean in. You can see the arcs very clearly as they radiate outward, being narrower on the pinky side and wider on that side. So that's another good drawing, too. The sand is cool. It's simplified. And it's sort of, what is it doing? Sort of just you know, like that. Uh, almost as if it's holding maybe holding a stick of some sort. It's kind of in that position. That's a pretty natural position that the hand takes. These fingers are open a little more, these ones are closed in into the pocket or the palm of the hand. <laughs> And here you can see the forearm muscles and how they interact with the phalanges. And you can tell there's a whole, a whole bunch of them in there. So again, uh, we, can, we can use this uh, to, once you get your expression down that you want, we can use this to figure out, making sure that when we see shadows and highlights that they're in the right spots. So as we got like uh, what uh, 15 minutes left, let's try to get at least one one action. So what are some of the other things? So clutching, squeezing, swinging, holding, pointing. Let's um, lead it with the mother of flicking. Flicking, yeah. Flicking, flicking, flicking. Turning. Rotating. Spinning. You know, something like that. What about? How about this? This and result, right? Cause and effect, as it were. One and two. Flicking? You so see, like you're flicking the cap off the end? Yeah. So, initial, secondary. This is simple. All right, so what do you want to do? That'll work. You see how the fingers are wrapped around the whole part? This. Yeah. You guys got uh, cameras on your cell phone? Yeah. Yes. Take some shots. Shake off the older hand. 
Yeah, well, just to, just to, just for ideas, she does that do those two actions because you can always go forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, and forward, back, forward, back, and see if the action was convincing or not. What are some of the actions? Other actions. Gripping. Yeah, we're here till noon. Okay. So you get some time to draw something. Yeah, just trying to figure out what an action, 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 action. Before you use a marker, I use something smaller. Because ah, okay. I always get just the inside good. of it. If you use the marker, you can just uh, sort of leave the cap almost ajar. And I actually like the dynamic or the diagonal. Because yeah. if you have a diagonal in it, it creates tension in the picture when everything else is in the salt. Yeah, that's a good idea. Right? That is good. That sounds fun. Let's just bend these There you go. So it's going to be action pose, right? Yeah. Okay. It's action. Mm -hmm. This is going to look a bit odd. Okay. Because usually your thumb doesn't go all the way through that a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, only actually, it, yeah, I understand. It actually makes, uh, it like that. yeah. It's okay. Put your thumb right through it. It makes it look like they're they're 
they're rusty. <laughs> and you really need to squeeze them. I'll make them rusty. Okay. Page. Yes, yes. Should I get a full page? Now, the other thing, too, is you need to decide. The scissors are going to sit in the page vertical, vertical, diagonal, or horizontal. What do you have in mind? Um, we have a let's, look, let's look first of all. So, uh, diagonal would go from corner to corner. So, the bottom, so the bottom right is where your so your wrist is coming into the paper, your hand is drawn here, and the scissors are going in that direction. Right. Yeah. Right. Like a little off. Okay. Like this. So, so I'm imagining here that it's a. Is your page around generally? So your hand is coming in the direction in the picture here, and what do we got here? Thumb. Um, so there, and let's see. Your fingers are. <coughs> Yeah, going in that position, okay. Yeah. Remember to draw, okay, just first of all, draw the whole hand. Try to get the whole hand in there. You're going to also need to come down this way more because the scissors are going to have to fit up there. Okay. What I'm just trying to think of is if your thumb is here, I mean, maybe they'll yeah, point it off. Okay. Do you want smaller scissors? Do you have smaller scissors? No, it's fine. It's, the hole's going to be different. I can make them smaller scissors. Yeah, you see that you then uh, what they do, we go back, goes back this way, and then up. There's actually some up here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so, so. Can we use all boys to draw in the joints of the fingers as well as? Like, I'm so sorry, can you repeat that, please? We use all boys to uh, show the uh, joints of the fingers. But we also use them to build up the actual fingers themselves as well. You can, or again, like I said, you can make them geometric. Remember when I was doing the angular, angular type? Yeah. Like you either use cool. cylindrical, ovoids, ellipses, or you can use uh, boxes like French fries, or you can use a commingling of the two, a combination of the two, independent on the uh, structure you need. Do you have a preference? Yeah, I like ovoids. I personally. And I think it's a more natural way to, to run your things. It's circular, elliptical. Okay. That's what I'm getting. Because so. mm -hmm. then you can impose, impose geometry on top of it a little bit more. But, uh, with geometry, you start out with broken lines and like the continuity of the ellipses. <laughs> Quick writing. Yeah. 
And then you're doing suggest to bring the thumb over here. Yeah. You don't have to erase what you have on there. Oh, you can redraw it. Just redraw it and then that's what you pencil in. I like the idea that the thumb has a ghost. Okay. But that's up to you. That's up to you. Well, I need more detail. But for now it's just a big solid black thing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Does not work. No, it does. It's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Yeah. 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 Okay, how do you want me to hold my pencil on the to do this? <laughs> uh, in order to do the plug. Well, you know, I do like line things. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, you know, I always teach everyone to hold a pencil like this. But I notice that you guys feel comfortable going like this. And he's got a different yeah. thumb actually goes around. Yeah. That's okay. I'm just like it. people hold the pencil. Uh, per, I prefer this way, um, but when you're working flat, it's not easy to do so. What happens when you do a line though this way? Um, I, I can use the other side of your book. I'm going to use this part here just to show you. You just all you need to do is um, roll your pencil. Uh, you can go from a thin line to a thick line. And it's not easy to do that way, but it's easier to do it this way when you when you can. You go from the tip, very thin, light line, to very heavy, darker, wider, right? So you're going from, from the tip to the to the side of it. If you're if you're working like this though, you can still go very lightly and then just try to fan out on it. Right? You have to make the pencil collapse. Uh, some some people are taught to roll it. And you notice how I'm spinning it in my fingers, right? Yeah. Uh, so you can spin it yeah. as well, but rolling your pencil really doesn't mean spinning as much as it goes from going from tip to blade. Like so you have a and stuff like that. Uh, let's say for instance, where that occurs naturally is say in this area here, you know, so it does go from a very thin, it goes a little bit bigger, and it goes thin again and a little bit more, but it really broadens out back here. Mm -hmm. And then tapers off at the end. So it's sort of like this, back, in, taper, disappear. And this sort of um, line weight creates depth, creates sharper and more a groove, like a deeper valley. Um, and that happens all over our bodies when you have skin and muscle. You have that. In your hand in the center, where you have those lines, if you can try to practice making the line from thin, crisp, and light to thick, hard, dark, and then back to thin and light again. Okay. All right. Can you show some different ways to hold a pencil? Okay. Oh, hold like this, right? Different ways. To, yeah. Um, well, that, that actually could work, too, this holding it like this. Is if you know enough people do that when they're shading, yeah. you can go from the tip of it, you can go to the broad side, and then the tip of it again. Oh, yeah. So, all I did is I just fell and I stood up against it. With it. The other way is uh, uh, you see my pinky touches the paper. So, I, I, hardly, I don't have to get much line on it. The finger's doing the guiding and the skating for me. And the pencil's just delicately touching the surface. And that works too. Um, that way, you don't have to get all kinds of real heavy line. You do have a nice line. Sensitivity of the line is quite nice, but let's say here, for instance, oh, we want to make that crisper and articulate the fact that these finger parts here are tucked into the flesh just by doing that, it looks more realistic all, all of a sudden. You see what I mean? Where the thumb isn't coming over, there's a little pocket here. I have a light little line there, but you're missing this part of the hand. The thumb pocket goes in here. That's our negative space. In that negative space, you go a little bit darker also, because that's pinching in. Now you've already you've created a bit, a bit of a valley right? in that. Um, and it's not always necessary, but let's say, for instance, here, where these fingers are joined, you would definitely have greater impact of line right there. And here, and here, oops, and there. A little like the bottom of the fingers in your hand. Yeah, a little bit. Not so much so because they're not making contact with anything else. But you can see it's sort of fanged off. But 
if you guys like coming down, usually it's just like one of those top areas and it's yeah. darker. So when do we have our lines? Contact. Two things. One thing was when one some, one object is one cylinder, one form, and one aspect is pressing in something else. Your line weight is, is thicker. It's darker and thicker. Sometimes it's crisp, but it is dark. Okay. Hey, the, um, this, uh, I'm going to say hard, dark, thin, thick. Uh, the other one, dark, light, hard, soft, and then these two are wrong. Right? right. Soft, dark, light, thin, and thick. Those variables are expressive ways to create uh, volume without having to go in and shade everything. Right. Just like what about like where gravity happens, like uh, where it's pulling on the hand, I guess. Just well, okay. Like that. Um, what I meant was when things are making contact with other things. More so that, but let's say here, even in the wrist, and this looks quite good when you cut that. But right here, this, this little area where the hand is Fusing itself into the wrist, you could you would emphasize your line weight darker right there. Okay. Okay. Anytime you want to create some tension, if you even look at my hand here, you can see how dark it is underneath there compared to the top. So when something is spread out, it is you're going to use a lighter line weight. It's called a, a stretch, and then this is a squash. So I'm write that here too. Squash, stretch. Uh, does that have an A in it or not? Stretch? Yeah. Uh, no way. Okay. I get next. Americans and Canadians. I type in something like, um, let's say, flavor. And it's flavor, flavor. And an American, it's just not right. Flavor, O R. We use O U R. You guys use O R. O R. I use O color. Okay. Oh, same thing. Oh, it's usually the, it's the OURs. That's right. All right, so a stretch. I also don't have a glass one. A stretch is where you would keep your line nice and, nice and soft. A squash, and we could see that with our model last night too. A squash is going to have a darker, darker line. Okay. Now, if it's a young person, you won't have so many lines and stuff. You generally doesn't matter who you are. You're going to have either uh, an area that's stretching or an area that's collapsing. Right. They also can. Uh, some people call that wedging. Uh, wedging occurs when two bones or two forms are are making contact with each other. Now, that even happens a lot of times with the body. So this side's wedged. Let's say I have a big heavy brick in my hand, causing my body to collapse on that side. Okay, so this side's wedging or squashing. Squashing is a little more elastic. Wedging is more sort of uh, forceful. That's where gravity plays into line weight. And how do you change your line if it's squashing? How do you change your line if it's squashing? Yeah. Um, usually squashing would have more lines. So in sort of a Michelin man effect, right? And then uh, a wedging usually has one real forceful sort of, uh, it's sort of a, this is what I understood anyway. Um, let me go back. Uh, so, I don't know, a squash, let's say this is the buttocks of a figure. So coming in here. Now, if it's a squash, it's going to be sort of a lighter pinch, and then this side is more open, like that. But if it's a wedge, apparently you really get a a heavier sort of line there. And so the gravity sort of pulls down. You know, they are something 
thing. So this is this is actually where you get a pinch. You have it maybe in a couple of spots too. So you go over that way and that way. And then this side would stay more, you know, sort of open. But um, the same thing, like if I might bring my thumb down, I can I can squash it. But if it's being <laughs> forced in one way, another, it's wedged. So that's uh, those are different ways that I did. So whatever you put in your drawing, like awareness of those different tensions or actions, and how would your line be affected? So it keeps a thought. And of course, you have to do it in an economical way because it's animation drawing, not fine art drawing. Mm -hmm. Well, it's my blue line. I don't know what level for it says this. What you saying? It's my blue line. Look okay before I start Oh, okay. Uh, um, first of all, yep. the area of your thumb at the top is thinner, <laughs> this area here, and the bone gets wider right there. Sorry for touching, but that's okay. But I don't know how else to <laughs> that's uh that's quite interesting because you've got a lot of tension in here because of this the distance i would say the only thing i'm uh, concerned about you don't even have to get the whole scissor in but make sure you get at least that part in quite accurately the handle has to curve backward more and we're going to come back a little bit more there no that's your hand is long so that's fine. We're going to come up, come up here on that bone. A little bit on there. And then we'll get, uh, let's see here. I'm going to bring these lines down into your hand. And these shouldn't break off. They should continue up sort of throughout the hand a little bit more. This was a nice one. You can emphasize the darkness of that. Draw the centers. And then we'll get to the hand in a second. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I think you got like good. Because look, look at the distance here. Even me, I have shorter hands than you. But that's a lot of space. Yep. You know, so if you're okay with that. Thanks, Dave. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, the next thing is, and let's look at the thumb itself. Now you've got one plane, and then it rounds over there. This area here, there's a little bit of a dividing line, just a slight bit. Can you see that? Then let's follow the contour of the pocket of your hand. It scoops inward. There's a, con there's a, a concave space there. Okay. Remember concave convex? Yes. Okay. Try to follow that and maybe uh, when you get to your pencil, that's the area you can darken up a little bit more. What else do you want me to do here? You said like, there's a gap in between here? So there's like a small space in between here. Yeah, I'll okay. get to the other side here. Let's see. Okay. That's right. You don't like drawing the scissors? No. Let's do this plane. Look at the empty spaces in between. That might help. I like that quite a bit there. You see what I'm drawing? Yes. Yeah. Remember I mentioned penumbra? When did I go? It almost I has that. Then the from where the thumb is going inward, the triangles in between, this part, there's a shadow. I think one time about the structure, the angles of it. Mm -hmm. Another time, shadow by looking at the spaces in between. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. I guess you can work that in with the pencil a little more. Uh, get some of the skin with the pencil as well. I like that. That's quite good. Your shadow, though, is going through here because the mug is going to the table. you got a highlight there, so it goes shadow, highlight, shadow again. And that shadow is coming right down the hand. So you can, I think you should, you could probably draw the outside edge of it right as a contour. That's going to be quite dark when we pencil it in. I'm like drawing in the shadow. Yeah, and then leave this shape here as a highlight. It's, it's almost an S curve. And down in, down up. That's this area here. So keep that kind of lighter. So the shadow, light, shadow again through there. 
draw the outside edge of it just lightly. Wait, isn't that light shadow then light here for the penumbra? Not I'm drawing that part. That's dark, that's light, that's dark again. Oh, okay. And you have this V, you have a V that's right there. Because you got this little pouch of flash there. There's a V right here. So yeah. Get that in there because that's going to give it life and a believability. You want me to draw some with the blue? Or? Yeah, you, well, if you put it on the blue, you at least know that it's there. Okay. We're after a pretty realist drawing in this case. You start out, you start out very animated, very loose, very cylindrical, very elliptical, gestural, and now we're crystallizing into a realist or uh, a depictive hand. I think actually, can I see this? Can I actually, it's that this comes down here a little bit more, and then angles in, and your scissor handle itself should kind of bring that over more. You understand what I mean? I, we'll kind of get rid of that part a bit, okay? Now, the other thing, too, is you look at the scissors, make sure that, <coughs> are they dimensional, right? Are they 2D or 3D? So if they're 3D, you should be able to see a little bit of the inside. Okay. <clears throat> the thicker you make them, the stronger they'll appear. Mm -hmm. That's all. The shadow runs up with the thumb as well, right? Yes, it does. Okay. And I shadow this in here because mm -hmm. it goes around the thumb here and it's also down here. Mm -hmm. You said there was light over here, right? Or yeah. something? No, something. you're fine. You're fine there. The light's fine. Okay. okay. And you could darken the middle. I'd say put the blue away now and let's go with, uh, go with your pencil. Have a look like this, right? <clears throat> Uh, you can hold it uh, the, north the way you normally do. Okay. That's fine. But I just want to point out to you, though, from your thumb here, that should be thinner. Then the, the, the broadest part of it will be in here. Then it almost tucks in again in your case. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, and then look at here. You've got this V. Almost in this sort of little body. Okay. I think it's down here. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Just that you don't want to make sure you get that pinched in. And go ahead and just drop the way you normally do. And all we got to do is stick it up in lines after. No big deal. Okay, so I just draw them like normal? Yeah, just do your normal thing. Sure. That's not bad at all. Maybe thicken up, uh, just thicken up the handle a little bit on those. If you notice, you see it. Just give it a little more thickness there, and then give the two dimension, the three dimensionality also to that part. 
Yeah. But it looks fine. Though. I like it. <laughs> His big hands squeezing the sugar. It's nice. I'll just tell you where to articulate a little more. Articulate a little more outline variation. Wait, so by that you mean you want them to go in like afterwards? Yeah, right just exactly. You just emphasize. All it is is that the line will fade off, but not so abruptly. I like to use the analogy of this. So you pull out of your driveway, and then you go down a one way street, and you go to a two way street, then you get onto a major road, you go down the then you get onto the expressway. Hmm? You go down the one way street, the truck drive. Yes. yes. Okay, that's good. It's not a trick question. Okay, keep going. So imagine, okay, this when you're you're way up in the sky and you're looking down and you're watching a car. The car pulls out of the driveway and goes on a one way street the correct way. <laughs> then it goes on to a two lane road and it gets onto a major major city road. And it goes to the expressway. What has happened is such that the road width has gotten from very, very narrow to gradually wider. And then, it, and then you go home and it goes in the other direction. So you go from a very wide one to gradually smaller road until you're in your own driveway. So if you can imagine that line would do the same thing, what I mean is that it's come. Very thin and wide, a little broader, a little broader, a little broader, a little broader. And then right to the expressway, and then back down and around, and then into your own end. Line weight is just this thin and thick, light, dark. They just want to see those tendons. Find them and pull inside on that box. Great. Thanks, Judy. Bye. Bye.
And I do recommend this book for you guys. It's cheap. That's a damn good book. Is it? Yeah, that's good. Um, personally, I, I don't prefer the <clears throat> books that have uh, um, okay. a sort of hand drawn style. I don't explain it. The not a little complicated. Oh, this, I just find this one very simple. It's small, simple, straightforward, really great drawings, beautiful examples in the box. It has hand drawings, anatomy, uh, and it also has the um, photographs inside that are quite nice. There's a couple of hand positions too that are nice. Just a pulling thread in the needle, and that's very delicate. It's sort of dangling here. More feminine activities. Prayer, there's a nice one. Albert Durer's prayer. Okay, I finished with my line. Okay, let's see. Great. Right. So keeping your hand there. Let the line, as I was mentioning, fade off. Don't don't end the line abruptly. So it should come abrupt, fade away. Let's go for all lines. Yeah, that's that's how skin works. Pinches into nothing. Okay. okay. That's all I mean. So like even this line here. It doesn't end like that. So you don't drive your car down a two-lane highway and stop and get out. Yeah. You have to go to the. Uh, oh, yeah. You have to go to the narrow, put it back into your driveway. That's all it is. And sometimes they fade off in a couple of directions as well. Okay. So what I'm saying, so that's one aspect of the line. The other one is okay, where the squeeze is occurring, or where a shadow is occurring, it's emphasized. Look at that area in here. That's actually quite dark. So this part's coming up and over. It's going up and over like that, and then in around the marker. That's good. Now in this case, I would recommend that you switch to a different pencil. And I actually prefer that the students use um, at least a 4B, but 9Bs are great because you can go from a very uh, thin white line just with pressure to a very dark line. What do you have there, 6B? Yeah, six B, eight B. Figure eight. Yeah, eight, nine B. Better pencil for darks. For value. You see here? Oh, that's awesome. All right. You don't get the smudginess of a charcoal, but you get the density that you need. So, right in here. That's why you have a range of pencils. They're meant to be used for those reasons. Oh, okay. I thought we were just going to show our control for one pencil. That's your beginning pencil, right? Right. And then you can go up from there. That's why you've got the, uh, the whole range. I like a 9B, personally. I don't draw with anything but a 9B if I'm using graphite. As I actually don't really like graphite very much. I so Daniel, try a little section of it. We got about five minutes left. Try a little section of it. Just check with Jordan before he goes. Okay. So do I, can I just hold it normally, or should I like try with that? If you're working uh, horizontally on a table, I, I don't recommend going sideways. That that works well when you're working on an easel, because you can keep your arm and your pencil parallel to the picture plane. If you're working on a table like that, you probably just keep working with it in the way that you're comfortable. Can I make the dark lines where contact is occurring, right? Yes, so look where the marker is at the wrap, where your fingers are encompassing the marker. Okay. Okay, okay here we go. Here you go. Yeah. Just make sure you fade your line off. Okay. And I got, oh, it does like a big knife cut. It does. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> You'll get it. Yeah, it's you will. practice. Right? That's what you're here for. I really like this. I'm sorry? I really like this. You don't. Just uh, let's see. Find out. Let's look on your hand where I've got these little areas where the pinching is occurring. There's a, look at that diamond shape. Or is that? That's your second finger in, isn't it? Maybe your thumb is. Okay. 
Look at that diamond shape that's there. And it's actually like the highlight here too, right? And then you've got kind of almost a double crease. Just take your pencil and draw those little things. And if you want, maybe take your blue out of the inside. Erase it. I kind of like the blue there because I can like look well, back at it. So you look back at it. Sure. Gotcha. Uh, the stand. But yeah, on my final job. Actually, no. For sure. And they're like prior colleges. You don't really take that for the blue line? Yeah. Oh, I like to some of it, but it can't get like crazy messy. Yeah. Crazy messy, huh? Yeah, crazy messy. Crazy messy. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna need some help now. Alright. I was like, okay, all these fingers are making contact with the marker here. So I was like, oh, do do that and we'll just free to start. So you're looking at shadow. All you're doing is you're using a thicker line where shadow would normally be put in. Oh. So look at your hand for shadows, and that's it. That's all you gotta do. That's it. And that's it. You're using it to, to indicate shadowing. Instead of shadowing or shading, mm -hmm. you know, building up cross contour, cross hatching, hatching. You're just using line to, to show the shading. That's it. That, look, that looks good. It looks looking nice from here. So and then um, you can put when you do it at home, put a little desk light on your hand so you have really nice light. That's and then it'll better. make it a little easier to really see that than yeah. all this light we have here. So sometimes a crisp line, sometimes fuzzy, dark if you need to emphasize something. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to mark the outline because it's in my hand. Not outline, only where it's only where your fingers are wrapping around it. So Okay, so this side counts. Like the fingers aren't like there. Yes, like this side here. Uh, and maybe a little bit in here. I think it's good to make the markers fine and maybe just go up to the tip, just to indicate it's a marker. But I think what you did in the fingers is nice. Like anything else, I guess. Um. I just feel like you're missing a bit of skin folds in here. A little. <laughs> just a bit. No, that's okay. It's I think we're good. It's not the problem, isn't it? Yeah. That fix that? Make that ellipse more volumetric, too. By that, you mean? It flattened out right here. Oh, no. curve. Yeah, just a more curve. Yeah. Well, I think it's good. I think it's good. I think it's good. So, not to add any like more lines or anything? Nope. Any like darker lines? Less is more. Is it? Yes, it is. But can't you tell me to put more wrinkles or something? <laughs> Well, I thing is, less is more, but sometimes you, need, no, you, you just need to indicate the correct holes in the skin a little bit. You're still pretty good. Look here. Look here. And, and here they're, they're indicated in blue. You remember when I showed you the thumb muscle has striations in the fibers? Yeah. The muscle fibers? Can, can you not see that in this drawing? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Okay, but yours is not bad either. You got it it's pretty good, but look on your hand. And that's why I had indicating that there's a shadow here, but if you put some line through there, you get that sense of the, the thumb muscle being stretched. By line, you mean just like a line the, away from the skin? Line to indicate the edge of the shadow, or do you mean, mean like it's almost like cross hatching? Um, no, not cross hatching. Or like regular hatching. Yeah, not, uh, let's, let's look at the front muscle. Can you see the direction? It's actually inverted from this. Look here. Okay. Shadow, pocket, highlight, penumbra, shadow again. Lines articulating volume. Right. And actually, striations articulating the muscular direction. Highlight, shadow. See, lighter, darker, light, really light. That's all. So the, just some of the inside is a little bit lighter and some of the darker light through there. Okay. That's good. You're, you're, you're still you're pretty good. It's an animation. It's supposed to be clean. So I'm just indicating that here you could have 
Uh, I don't know how yours looks exactly, but you could have some striations to go through as well. If you don't see it, you don't have to put it. Will that be good enough to enter in? Or? How old are you, by the way? Hmm? How old are you? 17. 17. How many 17-year-olds have wrinkly? Not, I guess. not many, I imagine. So the hand you're looking at in the book is probably by a guy my age, like 40s. That's a big difference. But I do, I do see, I do see a bit of lines like that. But as long as you, you just want to make sure you get the third part of it, the volume. That's what I mean, like darker lines around the muscle here. You see, just what I've done, just these sort of. Oh, so I'm sort of like action. Kind of. Yeah, sure. kind of. Okay, I see. Why don't I this time? It's a little heavy on the top. And where's your 9B? I would suggest that you go and uh, come in and around and emphasize uh, the, the density of the scissors. You can keep it a little lighter on the outside, but come in, maybe darker on the inside. And then definitely where it's, your fingers are pinching in. Right? And then where it's wrapping in and around your thumb. Pinching here. Okay. Okay, should I make the line around like the thumb muscle darker as well, or yeah. the sort yes. of shadow? Yes. So, yeah. okay, a little bit, though, not, not too much. Because you don't want to create a crack or a cut. Okay, so this is good. Yes, it is compared to that one. Oh, okay. So, I, I just like that looks really messy. Right. You just have to get your eraser and it up. We can go over these with you guys tomorrow. Back in grade nine, how to do like six hand drawings, yeah. holding objects. Oh, really? Yeah. So you have had some practice. Yeah, I have. But they had to be like fully shaded. These are just lines, so I haven't really had to experiment with lines that much. Yeah. Well, thank you very much again. Usually they, they're sort of photographic, more so that you work on in high school, right? Or you do that stippling technique, with lots of dots. I'm sorry, I haven't had to do that. No? No. That's a standard high school drawing assignment. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Okay, okay, because I have to run. All right. Run, run, run. Also, no. the marker's not dried out. Good. Oh, okay. I'm a service of art. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Jordan. So, yeah. tomorrow is. I got some arguments to go to the Actually, no idea. No, I asked my how are you the other day. Okay. Well, I'm probably going to work out And then get out of here. Get your contact. Get your contact. Get your contact. Get your contact. Get your Get your contact. 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 Uh, you guys could uh, just clear off the table. How's it look? It's coming. Yeah, it's coming. I think we need to refine some of what you're doing. Like, you're new to the thick pencil, so that these are a little bit too much the same all the way around, a little bit heavy. Um, but you know, it's start practice with it, right? And we do a, and you know, you can go to that block spot thing and look at, look at good hand drawings and see what you like. Uh, we need to work a little bit on the, the marker. I'll see you. But, see you. Um, but uh, you know, it's a good, really good start. You're learning, right? Oh, There's something here that's odd. So I can help you with your marker. 
because um, it's got a sit in good form in here. It's not bad, but it could be. Oh, that's not the bottom of the marker. It, it's a little more protected, right? So um, now we do have hand drawing workshops again in the fall and winter. So that if you want to come back and do more, you can or just work on it, and then you know send us the results and, and we'll give you some input. Okay. All right. Yeah, so, yes, internally. My heart. Your heart hurts. Yes, my heart hurts. Okay. Yes. But I want to touch yeah. all the silver. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not like. Oh. Like, <laughs> oh, like you're taking it too seriously. Oh, no. um, no, well, I can help you on this. So you can throw. Yeah, we use books like this. You have to do that study, 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 practice. Well, you know, it's good. It's good to start. It's um, good to work on everything. Well, if if animation is the thing that you say, yeah, I really want to do that, mm -hmm. then yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, or you might or you might reevaluate it and say maybe you know after. The, yeah, I want to do special effects and things. What else not happen? But I looked, yeah. I looked into that. So, yeah, there's that too. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really. Yeah. Um, so, in, yeah. and there's any number of things you'll end up doing, but no, I mean, that this is, you've seen the kind of quality you're looking for, and you just keep watching. If that's what you really love, that's what you see yourself doing, then you work on the skills and you know, yeah. you know every day if you can. Yeah. Every other day, you can't do it yet. Right? And it develops. And you're and doing so really well. And you're so. And I'd like to have this determination. Oh, otherwise, I have to, yeah. You know, yeah. and the desire to it's learn like and figure it out. And, and, you know, that goes a long way. That, you know, oh, it's not quite good enough yet. Like, you want to. Yeah. Right? And we can do a little draw over on this yeah. tracing paper. I could help you see how would I do that. So maybe okay. we'll do that. Um, <laughs> How's the form at least? Is that okay? The form's much better. I think oh. you should look at this knuckle. That's that. Not too I sure about that. I don't know. That's kind of how it was. So it's like, like, oh, okay. Not maybe. The the really I'll just look at that. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. Like, or what do I need to add to make that equal equal? Yeah. Yeah. What do I need yeah. to change? Because it doesn't seem equal. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's almost a definite line. Uh, like a black. Pardon? Yeah. yeah um, it's, oh, it's, it's good. Yeah. I've seen better, but it's very good. Cool. Yeah. And but uh for the fours. I think I have six uh, pictures of her before. I could send you those. Like it didn't start like this. Okay, she did a lot of work to get it to that. Uh -huh. But she, so she took our hand drawing workshop that both Garth and I taught. Uh, she did a bunch of studies and she got it to this one. So many other workshops she did. She didn't do a lot because she, she's a really fast learner. She just did a few things she knew she really needed help on and she just worked on her own and had a session with Garth. And, and, you know, and just a little bit of input. He's one of those people who just learns really quickly and, and can work diligently. Yeah. So well, she was really life. crunching to get it done. So she would only take the time to come to workshop if she really needed to. She found it better kind of work on her own than just have a private session. And her yeah, parents had the money to be able to do that because private sessions cost more than a workshop. But it was more time efficient, which mattered more to her. Yeah. Right. Right. I have to help. Uh, I have a student that needs help. Like because she's handing in her portfolio today, um, and I think she's already up all night. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I have to help her on Google right now, so I can look at your guys' things later. We think it just clean off the table, so we're ready for the next thing. Make sure you have a nice little lunch break. We didn't really end up doing um, any like lessons last night. He didn't teach it. No, and um, the first time we didn't really do it either. Yeah. Well, I didn't know we were supposed to. I thought he was just going to point stuff out every now and then. She sort of did, but she did, which is what I was expecting. I didn't know we were supposed to do it. Really? We were all just supposed to work on it. Yeah, yeah, but I wanted each teacher to be about an hour of instruction total. Oh. Well, we can talk about that. Yeah, I know. So I'll. 
have to figure that out and make some kind of adjustment, okay? So well, I just gotta help this student who's probably freaking out right now. So, <laughs> I connect, connect with her and then... I'm gonna walk back to the house. 